Hey guys, Chris from Gamertech Toronto here, and if your PC won't turn on or it's stuck on a black screen or your monitor says no signal, don't worry, I've got you covered. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly where the problem is and how to fix it. I'm gonna go step by step through no power, fan spinning but no display, and boots up but no windows, with a few advanced tips that most people miss. So let's get started. All right, so here's the plan. Step number one, no power at all, system looks dead. Or maybe you have problem number two where it powers on but there's no display or signal. Maybe it posts but it won't boot into Windows. And in part four of this video, I'll be going through some extra troubleshooting like beep codes, speaker tests, BIOS updates, and the last resort, hardware swaps. We're also going to be going over some debug lights, CMOS resets, and how to test outside the case safely. So do yourself a favor, grab a screwdriver, and let's bring the system to life. All right, so in part one, we're going to be covering no power at all. If you press the power button and nothing happens, no lights, no fans, it's totally dead, Let's start here. The first thing we're gonna do, and a lot of people miss this step, is just check your power supply switch. Make sure it's flipped to the one side, and it sounds simple, but I mean, hey, we've all done it. Step number two, if that's done, check the power cable and the outlet. Make sure that the cable is tight, both in the PSU and in the wall. Maybe even try a totally different outlet or a power bar. Step number three, look for your motherboard standby lights. Many modern boards have a little LED that lights up when they're getting power. If it's off, you're not getting power at all. The fourth thing that you should check is to reseat your main power cables. The big 24 pin ATX connector into the motherboard, the eight pin CPU EPS connector, connector at the top of the board. Both of these should click in firmly. Make sure they are plugged in. The next thing we're going to check is to test the power button connection. If the front panel connector is wrong or its switch is faulty, use a screwdriver to briefly short the PWR pin so it can maybe turn on. You'd be surprised how many times we found connection issues and we just short the motherboard and the PC turns on. So definitely check that out. The next thing we're gonna check is for shorts. Check that there's no extra motherboard standoff screws touching the metal where they shouldn't be. Another thing you could check is a power supply test. You can also do the paper clip test by unplugging everything, bridge the green and black pins on the 24 pin connector and see if the fans spin up. That can confirm if the power supply can deliver just basic power. If the power supply fan doesn't spin at all, swap it for another PSU. If the power supply fan spins but the system won't start, your motherboard may not be getting power, likely either a short or a failed board. Okay, so this is part number two. So your PC powers on, the fans spin, the lights turn on, but you're still standing on black screen. All right, so the fans are spinning, the lights are on, but you see no picture. It's just a black screen. Let's go step by step as to what I would do in order to check to see if you could fix it. The first common problem is maybe a GPU connection issue. Make sure your display port or your HDMI is plugged into the graphics card and not the motherboard. We've seen this so many times with our customers. They'll call us, did you guys even test the $5,000 PC before shipping it out? Of course. The problem is it won't display all the time if you plug it into the motherboard unless there's onboard graphics but you shouldn't be using that anyway so plug your HDMI display port directly into the graphics card. If it's still not working try a different cable or a different monitor altogether. Swap the HDMI or display port or vice versa if you have another monitor or just a TV just test that out. The third thing I would check is to double check your monitor input. Sometimes the screen is on HDMI 2 or display port 2. Just manually switch the inputs on the monitor so that you're on the correct HDMI or display port. Don't always rely on the auto detect feature. Number four check your debug lights. Look for the four small debug lights labeled C CPU, DRAM, VGA, and boot. They are your best friends for figuring this out. Let's go through each debug light so you can get a better understanding of what it is and what it represents. If your DRAM light is on, this is what we should do. Power off your system, unplug the PSU, and then reseat your RAM. Try only one stick at a time, maybe in slot A2 or B2. Just try one at a time and swap them out. It could just be a faulty RAM stick. Also, if you can, make sure both clips are fully in. Sometimes you got to give RAM an extra good push to make Make sure it's fully in there. If it still isn't posting, try to clear the CMOS. You can either short it from the CMOS jumper for a few seconds and then remove the battery for about 10 minutes and then put it back in. Or you can also check your RAM QVL to see if it's on the motherboard's website. Not all kits of RAM are supported at full speed without a BIOS update. Now let's say you don't see the RAM light but you do see a VGA light. The first thing we're going to try is to reseed our graphics card. Take it out and put it back in. Another thing to check is that the PCIe power 
power cables are plugged in. Make sure you take it out and put it back. Sometimes you gotta give it a nice little push or until you hear the click. If you have a different PCIe slot on your motherboard, maybe take your graphics card out and plug it in. Could help try to get into the BIOS or at least post the PC. If your CPU has integrated graphics, maybe try this time plugging your HDMI or DisplayPort into the motherboard rather than the graphics card. It could be a graphics card issue. Now, let's say you don't have DRAM or VGA light, but your CPU light is on. Let's go ahead and double check that the eight pin CPU power cable at the top of the motherboard is fully seated. Another thing to check is make sure your cooler is mounted properly and it's not over tightened. I've seen lots of times where the cooler is not mounted correctly and it's causing the CPU to kind of bend a little bit and not make full contact with the motherboard. Also, if you just recently installed the CPU, check for any bent pins. There's a lot of times where I've seen customers bring in PCs with bent pins and then they expect it to work, but it's not. So double check if you just recently added a CPU, try reseating your CPU. If there's no debug lights at all and there's still no display, try a different RAM slot. Try unplugging all the USBs except your keyboard and mouse. Disconnect all drives, SSDs, HDDs, USBs, M.2s, any type of SSDs, just remove it for now so we can eliminate the boot confusion. An extra tip is if your fans spin and immediately shut off in the loop, that's usually a RAM issue or an unstable BIOS. So just try clearing CMOS and power the PC back up. Now let's talk about part three, your PC posts, but Windows won't load up. Now, if your system does show the motherboard logo and goes into BIOS, that means it's posting. It's alive, but it's not loading Windows. In your BIOS, go into your boot priority or your boot menu. Make sure Windows drive is listed first. If it's not there, your drive might be unplugged or just not detected or worst of all, corrupt. In BIOS, check under storage information or NVMe configuration. Do you see your drive listed? If not, power down and reseat the SSD completely. If it's a SATA drive, check both of the power and data cables are fully connected. If the drive is there, but it still won't boot into Windows, plug in a Windows installation USB. Go to the repair menu and click startup repair. If that fails, you can rebuild your bootloader with a few commands, but most of the time startup repair fixes it automatically. Also on a quick side note, just double check that your secure boot or TPM weren't disabled after the BIOS reset. If you just recently flashed your BIOS or changed platforms, you might need to re-enable those to boot your old SSD. All right, welcome to part four. We're gonna do a little bit more troubleshooting to see what the problem could be. If you've done everything that we've talked about and there's still no luck, we're gonna go deeper. Take the system out of the case and just do a minimal boot. This is also known as an external test bench. Plug in only what is absolutely necessary. Your motherboard, your CPU, cooler for the CPU, one stick of RAM, GPU, but only if there's no integrated graphics and power supply. You don't wanna see any drives. You don't want any RGB hubs, no fans, nothing else. Then using your screwdriver, we're gonna go ahead and short the power pins to start it. If it posts, it means something inside your case was shorting it, maybe a standoff or a loose screw. It's happened to me and it's happened to some of my customers before. If it still doesn't boot, now we're down to the big four components. RAM, GPU, power supply, or your motherboard. Try swapping one part at a time if you can. Borrow a stick of RAM from another system or from your friend, test it with another power supply. If you have an older GPU laying around, just pop it in. If one of those fixes it, well, there's your culprit. As a bonus tip, if your motherboard doesn't have any LED lights or debug tools, just add a speaker or a debug display. Sometimes the motherboard supports for a small PC speaker on the front panel header. You'll get beep codes, short and long beeps. That'll tell you exactly what's wrong. You can look them up on your motherboard's manual. It's a super helpful trick on budget boards, especially because most of them don't come with debug lights. Here's a BIOS update tip. If you just installed a brand new CPU and your PC power is on, but there's no display, your BIOS might not support that CPU yet. So check your board's website for BIOS versions. And if your board supports USB BIOS flashbacks, you can update it without a CPU installed. Check out some of our other videos. We've covered pretty much every motherboard's BIOS and how to install it. All you're gonna need is a USB stick in about five minutes. I have a full video on that as well. Short little story, this has happened to me a couple times, especially when I went from the Ryzen 7000 series to the 9000 series. 
So let's get down to our final checklist recap. Make sure your power supply switch is on. Make sure your power cable is connected securely. The 24 pin and the 8 pin CPU has to be properly seated. Make sure your display port cable is on the GPU and not the motherboard. Try one stick of RAM in the A2 slot. Try clearing CMOS using a jumper or just remove the battery. Try reseating your GPU and the PCIe power cables. Test the system with a minimal setup outside of the case. Check for any BIOS updates. And lastly, make sure your boot drive is properly detected in the BIOS. If you've done all of this and your PC still won't post, it's almost always one of three parts, motherboard, RAM, or a faulty GPU. And that's it. I really hope this video helped you guys. If it didn't, please leave me a comment down below with what your problem is, and I'll try to respond to as many of you guys as I can. If this video did help you though, please hit that like button and subscribe. Maybe share it with someone who you think is struggling to get their PC build running. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.